Two BattleBots veterans and one BattleBots applicant of note have entered the 2022 Robotica event. We talk all about them and a couple other confirmed and rumored robots for the Robotica heavyweight class here at the Combat Collective. Welcome to another news episode of the Combat Collective, bringing you everything you want to know from the world of robot combat and the heavyweight class, the fleetweight class from BattleBots to the live circuit. And we're talking a little bit about Robotica here as with their big weekend coming up on July 16th, Robotica is honestly shaping up surprisingly well as it is now looking to be arguably one of the largest heavyweight live event fields we've seen quite some time with their 12 robot lineup so far. Of course, this is subject to change, but... Boy, do we have an interesting set of robots lined up for this 250-pound class so far. As today, we talk about three of those highlight teams competing in the heavyweight class and some of the classes beyond, along with a couple of the rumored robots that are also expected to be at this event and some of the other confirms that are less noteworthy. We open up with a robot that you can likely expect to be seeing later this year at BattleBots Champions in that field. This is a robot that also is no stranger to the live scene calendar from earlier in the year and in fact is undefeated in the live circuit despite going out in the first round of its very first live event tournament. And that is right, the hyper-aggressive suplex machine Claw Viper from the past two BattleBots season is confirmed as three throwing its hat into the Houston ring under the guise Danger Noodle. This is a surprise to some fans in the live event scene, including myself, as uh, the robot Claw Viper is quite infamous for having arguably one of the best live event matches we've seen this year against Slamma 1.0 at Robot Ruckus last November, ending the fight with a brutal suplex that knocked the original Slamma out. But Slamma would advance regardless, as it is presumed that the Robot Ruckus team would ask Claw Viper to pull out the event at 1 0. After the uh, damages Claw Viper's speed and power did to the arena, of course, with his hyper aggressive, hyper speedy build, um, Claw Viper tore up the arena floor and even popped loose a couple of the arena walls, if I remember correctly, in that exciting matchup. Now, whether the team behind the Robot Ruckus Arena thinks that this updated arena can now withhold Claw Viper, or whether Team Microverse has made an agreement with the Robot Ruckus crew, or maybe the Robotica crew to um, have turned down Claw Viper's power, or maybe it's just overall speed is uh, yet to be seen, but we, I am very excited to see what is arguably one of the most must-see control bots in uh, all of the heavyweight class right now. Coming to Robotica here, I think it's going to be up there with Mad Catter as one of the serious favorites to win this competition. you got to watch out for Claw Viper. They're probably going to be shooting up the TCC rankings after this event. Team Microverse will also be showing up to the heavyweight class with Siegebreaker, the robot that originally inspired the 250 pound Claw Viper as Siegebreaker is now adopting the Claw Viper name. Siegebreaker is going to be an exciting robot entering the uh, exciting group of robots in the 12 pound class which is already fairly loaded with machines like Warhard and Cannibal Mini among a couple others in this group. Now let's talk about another BattleBots veteran that happens to also be another blue control bot that happens to also be another robot you can expect at BattleBots Champions this year. We're of course talking about the very spicy as of late Captain Charles Guan with his robot Overhaul 2.0. This would be a very fitting robot, well, let me say that again. What is suspected to be Overhaul 2.0, which of course will be a very fitting robot for the Robotica name. When you look at Overhaul 2.0, you just immediately think of a robot that would have been absolutely amazing to see compete at the old Robotica events back in the day. But, like I said, it is worth noting that it is not officially known to be Overhaul yet. The page has the entry listed as Deferred Maintenance. And uh, we know that Charles does have another live event heavyweight under the name Sadbot. And uh, maybe they made some updates. We know the robot does have a little bit of success. A win over Kraken. But, I mean, the weapon is listed as a clamper. And uh, the description is literally, I heard your robot needs an overhaul. So, take that for what you will. Assuming this will be the 2015 BattleBots quarterfinalist overhaul. 
We know Charles Gunn will be definitely looking to bounce back after a very rough 2021 BattleBots season where I believe they went 0-2 with losses against some really serious robots. It was just seriously some unfortunate luck for scheduling and Charles Gwan here. It took on Robot, who ended up placing second seed in the entire bracket during their debut fighter. I'm sorry, their return fight after a couple years. And then in their second matchup, they would take on BattleBots 2022 All-Star Blip. And what ended up being yet another one-sided affair so that was really tough for charles guan but this will be even ground here for overhaul to catch up some ground and make up a little room in the tcc rankings and just to make overhaul a better robot overall here it's going to be an even playing field where overhaul has the same shot as you know a weaponless mad catter team toes avalanche or of course the aforementioned claw viper and uh, we hopefully we're going to be seeing Charles make his first serious heavyweight championship push since that 2015 BattleBots run. And for the last of our three marquee heavyweight robots that we're talking about here, we have a heavyweight debut I don't think anyone was expecting to see just yet. As it turns out, the guys behind the very hyped up 2022 BattleBots hopeful Horizon 250 have confirmed that they are going to be bringing a modified version of Horizon titled Ryzen, sportsman version of the bot, for this event. And of course, due to the sportsman competition rules, the uh, blades that have been expected to be on Horizon and of course that have been on the smaller versions of Horizon like Skyline would not be allowed at this competition. And right now the big rumor is that Horizon is going to be taking the Mad Catter route, which would make sense since they're both California teams, maybe they're in cahoots talking to each other, to uh, probably just switch out the weapons for wheels. You know, that would be very fascinating to see. Um, only time will tell, but my opinion on the whole situation is I feel like... It would be very fascinating to see, especially if Horizon like flips on its side. Maybe it would do like a motorcycle kind of thing. That would be pretty cool to see. But unless it's just going to be trying to act like a pinball hazard here, bumping around, thumping off of things, maybe getting score some aggression points like that. But I really don't see that doing too well. I hope that maybe they have a modified arm set up going on where they're going to be like maybe attaching some axe heads or some spikes or maybe you know something modified to where when they swing that big weapon around they could still land some cleaving shots you know maybe it's something like an exodus or something that had a big spinner back in the day like that that's the only comparison i could see of making it but i am very excited to see what horizon can do here but of course um hot performance here for horizon and a strong showing of durability against some of the marquee names of this competition you know like overhaul or claw viper they could go a long way for Team Horizon for their chances at BattleBots in the future and for just Robotica in general. This though is a make or break situation and quite a risk for Team Horizon as uh, we've seen some considerably hyped up robots in the past which were applying for BattleBots seriously squander once they appeared on the live event stage. I mean just look at Mad Dog from the last Robot Ruckus and Robot Ruckus' past with um, Ratfish, a robot that has applied for BattleBots multiple times but has yet to break it mainly due to mediocre performances at Robot Ruckus. Other heavyweights which have entered the competition that we have a bit less info on than the hot topics that we just covered are a pair of Texan rookies in Tiger Plywood and Whole Hog. Now Whole Hog comes from Hardy Hog Combat Robotics out of Richardson, Texas and is actually the former Company Central BattleBots middleweight Snuggabot who was recently shown on the BattleBots subreddit and we can only assume was recently purchased by the Hardy Hog crew here. Um, to be converted into their heavyweight wedge bot, as from the picture here, it looks like it just has two front little prong forks and the hog face at the front. Um, reminds me a little bit of like a you go nowhere in that terms from the old Rampage team, but uh, I guess we're going to have to see. This robot might end up turning some heads if it ends up being reliable. And now, despite some rumors we have heard about robots competing at Robotica, Tiger Plywood is not affiliated with any Robotica Season 3 competitor and actually comes from the mind of Houston native Peter Chung, creator of fairy weights like Punch Buggy and Root Mean Square. Something interesting to note here though, there have been stories about a BattleBots applicant coming out of Houston from the Houston area robot combat guys for 2022-2023 and the prototype motors that are going to be used on that robot if it does come to fruition are actually going to be used on Tiger Plywood. So this is going to be a bit of a stress test for the Houston area combat robotics BattleBots team. Uh, would be worth watching out for I would say. And talking about all these rumors about new and old robots, there have been some murmurs on Reddit and Discord about various other robots from the old school era that may be intending to apply at Robotica here at the end. 
the biggest one of these and by far the most public is the one that was shared all over Reddit and TCC social media earlier in the month. This of course being the June 12th news by Mark Elam that Rosie the Riveter from Teen Juggerbot was actually being restored and worked on to potentially compete at Robotica 2022 for its first event in over two decades. But it seems that this news has fizzled out quite a bit. But there have been some rumors of buzz way under the contrenches of the Houston scene that uh, the organizers of the event have been sending some invitations out to some of the older teams from the eras of, you know, BattleBots, Comedy Central Days, Robotica, Robot Wars Extreme Warriors, trying to get some of these older teams back into action. And we have heard that some of these teams have reached out to them, some showing some interest and a couple trying to outright confirm themselves for the competition. But, of course, some things do come up, so it will be only a matter of time. You know, we'll just have to see who pulls up to the Comic Palooza event. But it's going to be an interesting final stretch for Robotic here. We'll just have to see what happens as we have now caught you up on the 12 robots that we know for heavyweight class so far for Robotica 2022. As we're now just a couple weeks away before the Lone Star State hosts its largest robot combat event in over 15 years. I do have some interesting news for myself though, as on July 16th and 17th, I will be doing the first TCC live streams amidst the havoc, which will be doing live updates for Medway Rapture, Robotica 2022, and Norwalk Havoc for July. But it looks like we will be taking a focus on NHRL July, as Mark Elam has recently announced on Discord that Robotica will not be live streamed. They will be waiting for posting their videos on the YouTube page for Houston Area Combat Robotics. But we do expect some Instagram, some live fan cam footage to service on YouTube pretty quickly of the event. So we'll keep an eye out for that. We'll be keeping an eye out for bracket updates, pictures, news from the event. And uh, on Amidst the Havoc, we'll be updating you everything we can about Robotica 2022. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully you guys can join me and we can talk combat robots a little bit. But this is going to wrap it up for us at the Combat Collective. This will likely be our last Robotica news video until Amidst the Havoc when we start covering the event live. But if any exciting robots do get announced or maybe some other exciting developments do come from the organizers of the event, we will likely be posting another video talking about you know some of the other changes, some of the other developments for Robotica before the event does go down. If you like what you're seeing here at the Combot Collective, please give us a like, comment, and a subscription here on our YouTube page. We appreciate all your support and criticism. And if you like us, please find our social media as well. Please follow our Instagram, our Facebook, and our Discord page. We did get an update that apparently our Discord link was messed up for a little while. It is now fixed. Please join the Discord. It's where we post all of our video news first. Keep an eye out for that. All those links will be in the description below. This has been the Combat Collective with another news video on Robotica. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest hard ram and this